beginning of the play is, is, is very interesting. Again, people enjoy calling him the, the gloomy Dane. And yeah, exactly. This morose play. He's in deep mourning. He's just lost his father, who he obviously adored, or at least had a very, very significant role in his life. And to make matters worse, his mother has married almost immediately his uncle, his father's brother, and left him almost in this desert of mourning, where he's all on his own, isolated. And, but he's, very, he's questioning his own life. He says in the, the first time you see him alone, you know, um, that he wished in a way he could kill himself. And the only reason he won't is because God is against it. But he's over with the world. He's over with everything cynical and negative, because to him he, he sees everything as a polluted garden, as, he, as a, he, uh, an unseeded garden, he calls it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he is approached and told that a spirit of his father has been seen walking the battlements of the castle. He hooks onto it immediately, which is unusual, because, of course, you'd think it would be the last thing he'd need, but it's, it, it, to me it's a, it's a sign that there's a chink of hope, there's, there's a chink of something a amiss and also possibly something afoot. And so he believes in them and, and follows them. Roll tape, here it is. Act one, scene four. They clip us drunkards and with swinish phrase soil our addition. And indeed, it takes from our achievement, so performed at height, the pith and marrow of our attribute. Good luck, my lord, it comes! <laughs> Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell. Be thy intent, wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why thy canonized bones her said in death have burst their ceremonies by the sepulchre, wherein we saw thee quietly interned, has hoped his ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again. What may this mean? Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? In, in all this transitions that you have to go through here, hmm. what's the actor's head thinking? Because you're doing it every night. Yeah. You want to make sure it has a freshness. There's so much to play with every night. Yeah, exactly. So it might be a different performance. Indeed. But, uh, and, and there's always something to get right and get better and yeah. improve. And there's always something to re-examine. I mean, first of all, the si I don't think Shakespeare wrote a bigger part. It's about 45, 50 yeah, percent right. of one of his longest plays. Yeah, exactly. So you have an, a huge amount of dialogue, which offers many opportunities there are you know each line you want to you want to master perfectly and you may not do one line as well as you did the other line the night yeah. before so that night your challenge is well oh yeah there's that breath i really wanted to get on that line and if you get it there it might send you to another place that's even better exactly and and then in, uh, underneath that is a, is a situation a wonderful heightened situation which builds and builds and builds and the same with that but on a larger the, 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 in the same way you may not get that so heartfelt one night but you get it the next and that again leads you to another so it's a, it's it's an it's an enormous three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle that mm. that offers itself to you and never stops challenging and never stops exciting the performer i can't believe there was an a, there was an actor out there who's played him who could say i got bored of playing him he is i mean my fear is you know i finish here in december and there are no plans so far to take him on or to do anything else but quite what you do next, I have no idea. I'll need to call Ken. He got me into it, and now he's going to get me out of it. <laughs> but, I mean, is it likely that you would most want to go do another Shakespearean play? Very possibly, although really? I'd need a rest. <laughs> yeah. But you might. Yes, very, and, very possibly. And, and you feel good about being back on stage. I'm very pleased to be back on stage, yeah. It was where I started. Yeah, and, and that's why I asked. But, I mean, it, and you also have created enough of a... Of a body of work on film that you can go back anytime you want. You can go back and forth. Yeah. And this will make it even, the choices even better. I hope so. I hope so. Um, I'd forgotten the exhilaration of theatre. Um, on, on many levels, the exhilaration of having a live audience, of playing it there and then, 
experiencing this this wonderful alchemy that that happens over the um, the end the, the edge of the stage and the beginning of the auditorium, and indeed the the the, the, the potency of an ensemble and what you build up, the rapport you build with a group of actors. And of course there's that wonderful theme in Hamlet where the only people ultimately he um, recognises himself in are the actors. Yeah. And there are all these references to, oh, the, play, the, the players are coming and put on the play. Yeah, and yeah. He, he adores the idea of performance and through performance, of yeah. course, he is also able to capture real life um, in, uh, in, in tripping yeah. up his uncle. So taking this on the road had this fantastic mirror of that, suddenly packing up the stage and taking it to Kronberg Castle in, in, in Elsinore in right. Denmark was... Um, now, was the Prince of Denmark there or something yes, in the, the audience? Yes, the Prince of Denmark came to the first <laughs> performance. <laughs> All right, set this up for me. Act 4, scene 2. Hamlet won't tell Rosencrantz and Gildestern where Polonius's dead body is. There are all these themes of madness throughout Hamlet and, and many questions posed. Is he mad? What is madness? How mad is he? Does he become mad? To me, the path is quite straightforward, actually. Um, I'm not going to explain it now because I think it's more exciting when okay, people fair. come and see no. it. But what I will say right. is this, that he gets as close to madness <laughs> yeah. as possible after he's killed Polonius. And at this stage, he's... he's Recognition of what life is and the and, uh, and 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 the worth of life is very potent in his tongue and in his mind. In and indeed, he's also in this moment battling with his newfound enemies, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, who prior to this were indeed his oldest friends. Roll tape. Here it is. What have you done, my lord, with the dead body? Compounded it with dust where true tis kin. Tell us where it is that we may take it thence and bear it to the chapel. Do not believe it. Believe what? That I may keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, be demanded of a sponge. What replication should be made by the son of a king? Take you me for a sponge, my lord. I, sir. One that soaks up the king's countenance, his rewards, his authorities. But such officers do the king's best service in the end. He keeps them like an ape in the corner of his jaw, first mouthed to be last swallowed. When he needs what you have gleaned, it is but squeezing you and, sponge, you shall be dry again. I understand you not, my lord. <laughs> I'm glad of it. A knavish speech sleeps in a foolish ear. My lord, you must tell us where the body is and go with us to the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king is a thing. A thing, my lord. Of nothing. Ah! Every night, does the audience react different? Do you get different moments in terms of the line one night versus another night? Or do they seem to respond the same way in terms of applause? There are certain um, reactions every night to yeah. key moments. Yeah. which they're waiting for. Which they're waiting for, which are also brilliantly written and brilliantly performed, I have yeah. to say, by the company. The role of Polonius, which Ron Cook plays, is filled with the most fantastic wordplay and witticism, and Ron is a brilliant actor and a brilliant right. comic right. actor. Right. Um, so there are certain key moments and key physical moments that we've devised that we, we know we get positive response from. Sometimes we don't, and that's the wonder of live theatre too, when you're like, and, and there's and, nothing and there. You, and, and you're, you're saying, to, did you not get it? You have to get, you have to carry on and right. motor on and think, right. oh, maybe they'll oh, get I'll the get next them next one. Night. But there's also... That's the other great thing about theatre. I'll well, get exactly. them tomorrow night. You'll get them tomorrow night, and also tomorrow night they may get something that you've never gotten exactly, before. Right. And there's, what's, what I've noticed here is the audience is, it, the audience here really meets you halfway. They want they want to get it. They want to enjoy it. And there are certain moments which in the, in the London run are key moments of not humour, not drama, but, but, but shifts in the dynamic of the play. And here you can hear people mm, mm. audibly yeah. moving and feeling with you. It's very, very palpable. Everyone said so in the cast. And they're also very enthusiastic here, which is wonderful. They've got a great embrace. Do you, of the theatre. Do you see Hamlet or the performance different today than you did when you began? Oh, so many years, so many. Very, ago? very much so. Do you really? I mean, not 
I, look, I was thrilled with the London run yeah. and thrilled that we were embraced and, and enjoyed as much as we were. But I look back now and I think, oh my God. Well, what was I doing? What was I doing? I mean, I think, I think it's, it's the natural process that a part beds in to you, that there are qualities that you throw yourself into at the beginning of a run, which slowly turn, hone down and co other colours come up. I'd say there was a brashness to him. And a, an, an aggression that I found, a, a kind of fury I found in London, which I think has just levelled out somewhat. And there's slightly, there's a bit more wit here. Certainly more confidence, and that's because we know it as a as a company. We know the play yeah. very well. And the words and the response has been terrific too. I mean, both in terms of critical and in terms of audience response. Yeah. Let me do one more scene. Uh, Act five, scene one. Hamlet addresses the skull of Yorick, the king's jester. What can you tell us about that? I. Uh, I had this, I read, I read in a, one of the many books uh, in preparation for this part, this, 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 wonderful out, this wonderful observation that because Hamlet cannot play the king, his, his uncle has right, taken over right, the role of the right. king, he assumes the next most truthful role in court, which is the fool, yeah. which is why he puts on this antic disposition, why he is considered mad, because he starts speaking in the gibberish of a fool, which isn't madness, but is wit and often pointed truth. As the play unravels and he is finally accused of the murder of Polonius, he's sent away but returns having vowed to have bloody thoughts only. The first thing he sees is a grave digger and the grave digger unearths this skull which turns out to be the old fool's skull, which is a wonderful sort of symmetry. Yeah, yeah. It also happened to be one of his closest friends as a boy, this old man who was obviously the, the court jester. And it's also very much the completion of a circle of life. Suddenly Hamlet is aware that whatever you do, whatever you are capable of, you all end up the same. Whether you're Alexander the Great or Caesar or a grave digger or a lawyer or a politician or a, court or a courtier, you all end up in the earth yeah. and you all end up as matter. And when he suddenly has a connection, not just with that sort of scientific truth, but also with the actual life that was in this skull, it, it's, um, it's yet another moment that, if you like, affects him directly to the heart. Roll tape. Here it is. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now... How abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips, which I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chop fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come. Make her laugh at that. When you watch it, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it like that. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true, isn't it? It's clinical almost. Very, very clinical. Um, it's also very odd because I've been inhabiting him for so many months now. Since they may have shot this? or Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've never really watched that back. Yeah. I, just, I did a bit of a test and then I let them get on with it because... It's for theatre. I, I didn't really want to engage right, right. in the in the filming Thinking of it too much film. because right, it's exactly. um, a theatre piece. So I've been seeing him through here, not like that. So uh, you know, when you're making a film, you spend the day looking back on what you've done, and you get used to watching yourself right, 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 in right, stage. Right. You're living it, and you're looking out from your own skull. Yeah. Uh,